Thank you for uh, joining us for uh, what is a very important training session. Uh, Andrea will be uh, talking about drainage dimensioning and um, uh, with a real life example uh, in uh, northwestern Syria. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. This is Andrea again, and today we are going to speak about drainage, dimension of drainage, and quantity of water that goes through the drainage. You have in front of you a picture of an of a ADB camp. You see a drainage, but uh, how can you decide if this drainage is big enough, too small? How can we see uh, what type of shape of drainage shall we choose? And this is the topic of uh, this uh, uh, workshop today. Uh, before starting, I would like to say that this is the continuation of the previous workshop where we were speaking about watershed and the location of a possible drainage. At the very beginning, I would like to show the, you this um, diagram, this picture here. And this is actually the idea how the dimensioning of a drainage works. You can imagine that uh, you have a surface the surface needs to be drained with some drainage. So there is raining, rain going down to the area, uh, so-called uh, subcatchment, for example, on the picture S3. This rain at one point infiltrate, evaporate, and the rest of the, the water will run at one point to the existing drainage. Now, uh, we are going to identify the size of this subcatchment. We are going to describe the subcatchment, the average slope. And finally, we are going to uh, quantify the amount of water that will reach the drain. At this point, we will have a drain. We are going to uh, describe the drain. It means it can be a shape, it can be a pipe. We are going to see the slope of the drain. And then at the very end, we will see that all the three catchment, they will uh, join the water. And based on this uh, simulation, we will see how big our pipe must be. And uh, if the existing pipe is too small, if there is going to be flooded or not flooded. Of course, everything depends on the rain, the so-called rain gauge. We are working with rain cases, rain events, and we work with extreme cases. Usually, in a normal case, you work with an extreme case of every 50 years, maybe every 100 year, but not always you have the data available. Uh, in Switzerland, yes, it's easy to find the data, but in Syria, you will see through the workshop how it is much more difficult. We start with our Azrim IDP site. If you remember during the work, uh, during the meeting, uh, shelter cluster meeting, IID was presenting a site, and this is this uh, Kotlek shape site here. And also, they were very proud to tell us that they put a drainage. Why is not showing the drainage now? Sorry. Why is not showing the drainage? Oops. Okay, they put a drainage along this border. But they didn't tell us, they didn't tell us at all which direction flows the water. Sorry for that. Whoa. Whoa. They didn't show us in which direction the water flows. They only show us the, uh, the, the type of the drainage, which is this one. They told us it's a drainage of 40 centimeter diameter, and uh, we have to hope that this drainage is big enough. But now we have to see um, if it is really the case or not. What we do, what we have to do now, we go with the workflow. What we have to do, we have to display at the very beginning the digital terrain model. And we have to, we have to take a big size because you can see here, we have also mountains. And somehow the water is coming down through the mountains. 
And uh, once uh, you have displayed the digital terrain model, you do as usually the watershed analysis. This step has been already shown uh, during the previous workshop. You have to choose the parameter in order to have the most realistic and the best way. Uh, I did it already before. So I choose the stream drainage area of 50 square meters and a resolution of 20 meters. This value has been um, identified uh, after several attempts. Now it will take, it will make the analysis of the watershed, which is uh, know by every one of you because we did it in the previous workshop. It takes some time to make the analysis. Of course, if you increase the resolution, it will take even more time. Okay, we have it. We can, and now as usually what we do, we smooth a little bit the watershed in order to have it better uh, visualized. We select it, it takes also some time. And we smooth it, vertex editing and smooth. That's it. Takes some time, okay, that's it. Okay. At this point, um, we zoom again in into the into the site. We have our uh, our watershed analysis is look like that, and we have our drainage like that. Perfect. Um, and we have the streams. Now we see that something already is looks strange. We have our drainage in in this area but the watershed analysis show us a natural stream in this area like that. Okay, it's no problem. What we have to do now, um, in order to understand better where the water flows, we put random, randomly some points around our IDP site. I put 25 points here. You see those points here? And as well, I put some point a little bit far away in the mountains. And now I just want to see, to better understand if it rains, the water just raining over those points where it goes. And we do again a, a watershed analysis, considering those points, you select this reference point first. You make the watershed analysis with the same parameter, 50 square meter, 20 meter resolution, but from the points, from the, uh, from reference point, points, okay, it's here, I did 20 meter resolution, 20 meter, and important is that you check this uh, square strays from selected points, Here we go. Now we do that because we want to see the uh, subcatchment area that are interesting our existing drain or our plant drained. Okay, we have it. Now we see, okay, this we don't need. Now we see how it works. We don't need this one. So the water taking from this point is going this way, this way, this way, and this way. But also interesting, we see that all the water coming from the mountains here is coming actually very, very near, very, very close to our site. And this may be, has to be considered because this might cause floating on, uh, on, on a later, uh, on a later point. Now, okay, that's it. So we have a better, a little bit better understanding of the situation. We have our drainage. Our drainage that I just 
was um, drawing before doesn't have any elevation so far because I was just drawing it myself. So the first thing that we have to do, first I would just put the drain a bigger, a little bit bigger so that you can see it bigger. Maybe six, okay, so you see the drain. Okay, that's our drainage. This line, for the time being, is just a line and doesn't have any elevation. That's why we have to give the elevation, we have to attach the elevation to the drain. What I do, I select it. I select it, I display the digital elevation model. I right click on it. I go to analyze measurement and I say apply elevation to selected features. Now, this drain get the elevation. At this point, I can display the, um, I can display the profile of the plan drainage. Uh -huh. And I see something very strange. Uh, maybe, no, I go smaller like that, sorry. So, you see, it's actually very interesting that we see that the drainage, wait, I make it smaller. Okay, the root point, I don't consider, it's just when it is crossing the, the it is kind of the, the border of the uh, site. And this is our drainage. Now, if we put the slope from, uh, from, the, from the bottom to the top, it would be like that. You can see the red point. And we would have a, 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 a slope of, of, if you see uh, on the bottom, 0.19%. And this is not acceptable. This is impossible, it's too flat. Uh, you cannot put a drainage with such a flat slope because the water will not have enough carrying force to clean up, to self-cleaning the drainage. So, uh, so we see we have some problem. The drainage goes up at the beginning, up to here it goes up, then it goes down, then it goes up, and then it goes down. So somehow this drainage was designed without having thought about uh, the drainage. So the only thing what we can do, we can split the drainage in three parts. One part would be from here to here. And this would have a slope of 0.9%, which is fine. One part would be from here to here. This we would have a slope of 0.9%, which is fine. Another part would be from here to here. It is fine, a slope of 1.9 is fine. And one part here from here. What the uh, slope would be 1.8%, which is fine. But it means we, we have to split the drainage in one, two, three, in four parts. And uh, we have to identify the parts, how to split it. The best way to do it, we start maybe here. You click, you go here and you right click on that. And then you can say, create point feature at cursor location. And we create one point. We call, we call it um, a junction one, a junction one. And we create a new layer, create a new layer and we call junctions. Junctions workshop, okay. So we have created one. The second would be here. Right click, create point features. It would be junction two, junction two. Here it will be another junction. Right click, create junction three, junction three. Okay, and then one here. Right click, create point. Junction four, and here the last one would be here. Create junction five. Okay, so now we have created our junction. It's here, junction, and we make it bigger so that we can see it better. 
uh, maybe four. Okay. Okay. So we have our four junction. Now we know that the water will run from here up to this point. Sorry, no, from here up to this point, from here up to this point, from here up to this point, and from here up to this point. But what happens with the water here? The water here must go away somehow. If we look at this one, it must run out of this place. So that's why we have to create another junction. We create a junction here. So, yeah. Okay, we create a junction. We create a junction here. Would be junction, how much? Junction six, junction six. And then what's important for us at the same layer, junction layer, important is to see how big eventually must be this drain here, because these drains most probably will become a lot of water because the water comes all from the mountains. So we put a we can put, let's say, a junction here. Junction um, seven, seven. Okay, we have all the junction. Now, interesting, if we go to the information icons, we see those junction that has been created from the profile menu, they have all the elevation, you see 404 meter. But this junction that I create manually, oops, sorry, I take out this one. Those junction don't have elevation because I just put a point on my map. So we have to add the elevation to this junction as well. Okay, again, the same process. We select all the junction. We display the digital terrain model. We right click on it and we go to analysis and apply elevation to features. Okay, now all the junction has an elevation. We can cross check. Yes, there is an elevation now. Perfect. Now we have the junction. What we miss is the uh, watershed. We did before the watershed analysis, uh, this one, we have it here. And we can also display that one so that we understand. Uh, no, sorry, sorry. At this point, we need the pipe. Sorry, the watershed is coming later. We need the pipe. I take out the junction. Okay, where is it? Okay, it's, uh, we need the pipe. We have to split our drainage. The first pipe, I know, the first pipe will be, okay, the first pipe will be from here, and we started here, so from here, to here and we call it uh, drain one. We create a new layer and drainage section, section workshop. Okay, I have created a new layer drainage section and I put the first drain, fine. First drain is here. Now I double click on that. I want to, um, put as well the direction of the water, sorry, the direction of the water here. No, it's this one. Uh, it is track. No, I think it's this one. Okay. Okay. Now I have the direction of the water, maybe a little bigger. Okay, my first drain will take the water in this direction. The second pipe will go start from junction two to junction three. Ah, sorry, I have to put this one first. Junction two to junction three. 
to junction three, okay? It's drain two, okay? It's important you give the name of the drainage because on the second part of the workshop, when we do the simulation, we need those names. Now, then we have another drain from junction four going down again, up to here. This will be drain four. Okay. And now we have one from here, like that. Drain five. Okay. And then we have let this play. Okay, like that. We have one from here going like that. Okay, drain uh, five. And then the last one would be the big one. Let's display to be sure that we are more or less, oops, not this one. Yes, we do like that. Okay, and the last one, drain uh, eight. Eight, okay, we have our drainage now. So what we have done, the plant drainage has been split according to the, the water direction and we have added two section, one section here and one section here. Fine, at this point, we have to understand this piece of drainage, how much water it will becomes this piece of drainage, how much water, and this piece of drainage, how much water. That's why we did previously the watershed analysis. Um, no, from point, not this one, is this one. Okay, so it's very clear, and also we can put this one to understand. This piece of drainage will become, will receive the water from this yellow area. So now I will create a new sh uh, shape file, a new, a new layer, which is going to build, which is going to be called sub drain uh, sub catchment, and I will draw myself the uh, sub catchment area. So for this drainage, the area will be this one. The rest of the water goes somewhere else. I call it catchment area. Catchment area, this is drain, how much? Four. No, one, it doesn't matter. One. Okay, I have it. Now, this drainage here, it is not that much important because it goes this direction and also the area is very small. So. I, you, you should do it, but we will concentrate our analysis on the big drainage, this one, this one, and this one. So this, this small drain here will take really a few amount of water. Go away, okay. Ah. I, this still pop up, this, okay. Tuck. This, wall, this drain will take only this water from here, sorry, not that much water. Okay, uh, catchment two, catchment two, fine. Then this we have, this we have, this pipe here, this pipe here, let's take out no, no, that is fine. Let's take out this one. This pipe here will take more water. Will take the water. No, there is. This pipe will take actually all this water. Sorry. So. This pipe will take all this water. Probably like that. Uh, 
Okay, here I did a mistake. It is uh, drainage section, junction. Sub ah, I did a mistake. Sorry for that. I have to uh, start again because I did a mistake. Uh, I have to cancel this one. Is, I put it on the wrong layer. Okay, I also this one, I put it on the wrong layer. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Now, this drainage here will take this water, what we said, not too much. Okay. Okay, drain one, no, no, catchment one, catchment one, and I have to put on the right layer. Create new layer, catchment, workshop okay soup catch mint workshop okay now i put the right layer tack this is one the second one is very small it will take this water here okay catch mint two and the third one third this drain will take this area this water here Okay, catchment three, catchment three. And now we have to see the big one. What is going to happen with the big one? Uh, watershed, this one. This rain, this catchment, this pipe will take all the water that comes from the mountains. For that, we have to draw a big, a big uh, uh, watershed. Let me see how best I can do that is it okay and I take away also this one you need to be concentrated and sometimes online is difficult okay this drainage here from it will take a big area starting from here going up going up like that it takes like that it goes like that and then it goes up. This also, I just take maybe from point of reference. Yes, it helps to, to, to understand a little bit. This water also goes like that. This water goes like that. Goes like that. It's a big, big catchment area. It goes, let me see. It goes in between like that. I hope to catch all the rivers. Okay. It goes like that. Goes like that. I have to catch as well. Mm, it catch as well this one. Eh? I'm wrong. Oh, it's fine. I think it's fine. It's like that. Of course, if when you are not online streaming, it's easier. You can concentrate yourself kind of better. Okay. Like that. Okay, now here you see how big is the catchment area for the stream. That's catchment, uh, catchment four. Catchment four. Okay. Now you see the difference. The problem will be, okay, I take out this one. So catch me, take out this one. Okay, you see, this, small, this drainage will take small water, will take small water, but the real problem, it is here. And not here, how it was proposed during the workshop. And why it's a problem here? Because here we have a lot of water coming down from the mountains. And if you, if you check 
the difference in elevation, we put that, we make, we cross check here, we make a section here. Sorry, uh, and again, another one, better one, maybe we make a section here. You see, we, our site is, our site is here and here is actually the water where it comes. It is only 50 to 20 centimeter high difference between the big river and our sites. It means when it rains, the probability that this part of the site is going to be flooded is very high. Why? The probability that this part of the site is going to be flooded is very small because the catchment is not that big. Again, I put the stream that can show you again, not this one. So you see how it's much bigger this line and here is, is not that much. Okay, now we have defined our pipes. We have defined our catchment area and we have all the elevation. And the, the, the first analysis has been finished. What we have to do now, is we, we have to create a small map as reference for the next step when we use the second program. To create a small map, I just display the catchment, I display the drainage, the junction, and the rest I don't want. This is, maybe I can, no, that's fine. Uh, that's fine like that. I don't like the drainage like that. I change the drainage session a little bit smaller to one. Okay. Okay, that's better. And I do a screenshot of my sketch. To do very quick a screenshot. Oops, the, the last one. A screenshot of my section. And you will understand why I do it in a few minutes. Okay, I have my screenshot of the section like that. I crop the image and I save it as the uh, screenshot background map. Okay, that's my background map for the next step. And now we start with the second part of the of the workshop, where we do the water, uh, where we do the the simulation of the rain. It's a program called Storm Water Management Model S S W M M. Okay. It's an open source, oops, no, sorry. Why is not opening? Why I cannot open the software? Okay, it's here. No. Okay, now it's opening. I open the software. Like I told you, it's a open source software. And David, at this point, you could uh, you could display the link where to find the the software and where to find all the tutorials, the books around that. Okay, we have now a software that can simulate the behavior of our drainage system in function of the watershed or the subcatchment in function of the pipe, the, choose, the type of pipe and in function of the rain that it happens. When at the very beginning, when you open the program, you need to set up the project. You need to put the, the default and you go to project setup default. These are actually the uh, prefix that I put to any of the items that I'm going to display. Any type of rain gauge will start with rain, any type of catchment with catchment, the junction on the outlet. 
and the conduit, the pipes. That's it. Then also, you have to be sure that you have auto length off because we are not working in scale. We work out of scale, so we have to give ourselves the dimension. And then you can choose the flow units. I like to work in liter per second, but you can have cubic meter per second or whatever you prefer. At the very beginning, we put the drop up uh, maps in our project. Backdrop, we load our map that we have been uh, producing before. This one. Okay, now we have our map that helps us to draw our system. Now we have to draw the components of our system on this software one by one. We start with the uh, subcatchment. They don't need to be in scale. We start with subcatchment one. It is hydrology subcatchment, and you add the first subcatchment, tuck, and is this one. It doesn't need to be precise at all because all the data will take from a global mapper. That's the catchment one. Now we take the catchment two. Oh no, sorry, mistake. The catchment two is very small. The catchment two is very small. Catchment two, perfect. Catchment three, kind of bigger. Catchment three. And then catchment four is the big one. Harder. Catchment four, it goes up to the mountains. Okay, catchment. We have we have done the catchment. Now we um, we uh, draw the junction. Junction is hydraulics. They are called node here. Oh, no, junction. Sorry. We add the first one is this one, is junction four. We call it junction four. Junction four. Okay. And then this is junction two. Junction two. Junction two. We have junction three. Now this is junction three. Junction three. This is junction six. Junction six. Six and junction seven. Junction seven is actually not a junction, but but it, it is the outlet where the, the water is going away. So that's why it's not a junction, it's an outfall. And we have only one outfall. Outfall one. Okay, we have it, we have the junction, and now we need to draw the pipe, the conduits. Again, our uh, links, conduits. We have the pipe four, like that, up to junction three, fine. We have pipe two from here to here, fine. We have pipe three from here. No, sorry, from here to here, and pipe eight from here why is not coming? Okay, pipe eight. Okay, now I think something is missing, very, very important the rain. We need to put the rain gauge. We have to give the software the information how much rain we will have on this side. And that's why we go back to clip hydrology, rain gauge. We add one, 
we just put it somewhere, it doesn't matter. For this example, we consider only one type of rain. If you have a very big area, you could have several different rain events. Okay, we have one rain. So we have everything in our software drawing. Now I take out my backdrop. Okay, this is our system. Uh, I forget to tell you that we have as well to put, to display the names of the items under browser. Uh, no, where is it? Uh, wait. Okay, tools, map display tools, map display option. I want to display the name of the rain gauge, the sub catchment ID, the note ID, and the link ID. Okay, now we have it. Now we have the catchment name, the link, and everything. And we can even increase a little bit the situation. It's, this software is not really user-friendly. It's rather an old software, but it's like what we have. At this point, we have to give all the information to our elements. Okay. We can give, I uh, know, uh, the information are all stored in our global mapper. And uh, you should put this information on a paper, but I use an Excel file so that you can uh, see it better. Let's start with the sub, sub, sub catchment information. I have the sub catchment here, the, the sub catchment. What I need to know is the area, the slope, the average slope of the catchment and the width. The width is actually a very important for, uh, element that shows the distance from the point to the near pipe. You can imagine if you have a case like that, a catchment two, it rains after a few minutes, the water reach the pipe. But if you have a case like that, if it rains here, it takes maybe one hour to reach the pipe. And this information need to be considered during the simulation. And these figures here, sorry, the width, width, square meter divided by length, gives actually this relation. And then also we need for the catchment, the um, average slope. It's clear, if you have a very steep catchment, the water runs quicker. If you have a very uh, flat catchment, the water runs slower. And at the very end, all the water will be collected at one point here, but not at the same time. At the beginning, this water will reach here and after a while, the bigger water will reach here. So that's why we start with the information of the catchment. We go to global mapper, is this one, catchment one. To get information, you choose this uh, info tool, you click on it and here you have the value. You have the perimeter and the area, 2,841 square meter. I added 2,841. 2,841, okay, that's question one. The width, back here, uh, I take the measurement, measurement tool, it's, uh, the drain is there, probably the, the farthest point is this one. I measure here 55 meter. On the bottom left, you can see the measurement. 55 meter, okay, fine, go back here. So it's this number divided by 55, 55. Okay, that's the number. Catchment two, uh, uh, the, the average slope, back again. So we know the water is going from left to right. I take this one and I have to display the digital trend model. And uh, let's do like that, right click. The average slope I would say I estimate is 1.2%. Um, On the bottom, you can see these figures. 1.2, we have it, uh, 1.2, perfect. Let's go to catchment two. Catchment two is small. The area is 100, sorry, the area is 673 square meter. 
673 how much it was sorry 673 673 673 square meter the width is very close to the pipe the width so take the measurement tool ah. this pop up always annoy me okay it's here the, the farthest point probably is this one 25 meter let's say so i take this number divided by 25 25 okay and the average slope the water is running like that eh? average slope from here to here oops strange okay it's kind of flat 0 0.2 0 0.2 as you see it's really all an estimation 0 0.2 0 it's impossible it's too flat there is a mistake the slope maybe no i i, I took it's not the average slope let me see how the water flows it's like that eh? Okay, looks better. Okay, the slope is 1.2%. Uh, 1.2%. Catchment 3. And that's this one. Info. It's uh, 3858. 3850. The width would be that's the pipe. Let's take out this one. The width would be the pipe is there. Probably the farthest point is this one. Ah, sorry it's uh, 50 meter let's say again this number divided by 50 and the slope would be probably is this one the slope is like that probably yes the average slope 0 0.9 percent 0.9 percent 0.9 percent and now the last one the big one this is huge we know info it's oof, a big number square, so much square meter i copy it let's hope i can fast it yes it's that much hectare a lot of hectares and the width would be for the first point somewhere here this is 3.6 kilometer divided 3.6 kilometer okay and the average slope would be stuck average slope would be somehow like that three point eight percent three point eight percent three point eight percent okay we have for the cashment we have all the uh, necessary information now we can put the information on the junction for the junction we just need the the elevation allora, junction two would be info tool 
junction two is one under no, sorry that's a pipe I take out the pipe so I will not be disturbed I take out as well this one okay junction two will be 327.9 328 328 meter uh, pipe junction two three 329 meter okay that's true. junction three would be 326.9 then we would have junction 4 328 we don't have it here Three hundred and twenty-eight. Uh, we need also junction six. Three hundred and twenty-five point seven. Three hundred and twenty-five point seven. Three hundred and twenty-five point seven. This is junction six. And the last one. Junction seven. 25 point here is a point I put 0.5 because it's going up and reality is going down 325.5 325.5 okay that's it now that's junk seven actually no actually that's not junk seven that's the outlet 325 point5. That's not this one, this is wrong. Okay, now we have the junction and now we need to know the information about the pipes. Okay, we have drain two first. It is 51 meter, 0 0.13, 51 meter. Join drain two, conduit two, 51 meter, 51 meter. Okay. Drain four, it's one hundred and ten meter. Four. Ten meters. Pipe five is ninety eight meter. Ninety-eight meter, and the last one eight would be one hundred and eighty-three meter. One hundred and eighty-three meter. Okay, now we have all the requested information of our small system. What we need is the rain gauge. We need to know how much water, how much rain we have to count with. And this is very difficult for um, for Syria because we don't really have good data. What I could find is uh, where is it? It's a page now to find it uh, that uh, maybe uh, David you can also uh, share the link. Extremely light. Where are the links? Ah, it's here. Sorry, I can give the link data with a good uh, here. I found uh, oh, no, that, 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 that's that's the meteorological. I've, I've just put the meteorological yes, data on there, Andrea. Exactly. Yeah, I've, I've just posted that one. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Here in this page, that is the only one in English that I could find. I could find the rain data of the. Of, uh, of Idlib area. If, if you go down to the average monthly rainfall, we can see that we have average in January and December, the highest rain, but in extreme cases, we reach after up to 120 millimeter per month. It means during the whole month, we get this rain. Let's go more in detail. If we check December, we have this rain data of December. 
echo here. You see, in December, we can reach 120 millimeter per month. It means during 31 day, we will get 120 millimeter of rain and we can work with that. But what does it mean? We don't want to let rain 31 days a little bit. We want to concentrate all the rain, 120 millimeter, over five or over four days. So that it means, so in December, we, are one, we have 120 millimeter. We concentrate our rainy day in four, four days only, not six, four days. So we say it is not raining during the whole month, but only four days during over uh, uh, Christmas, it rains. It means in one day, we should have at least 30 millimeter of rain in one day for, per four days. And not all during the whole day is raining, but only during six hours is raining. It means 30 millimeter need to fall down in four hour. It means five millimeter per hour during six hour. So we have five millimeter uh, of rain in six hours, six hours. So now somehow I managed to, let's say, estimate a rain intensity. And I need the rain intensity, a very high rain intensity to make the simulation. Okay, uh, probably if it's not clear, you can intervene, of course. Eh? Now we have the data for the rain and we can, we can go back. Okay, we have it here. Now we have all the data that are important for our simulation but we have to insert those data in our simulation software. Let's start uh, with the mm, catchment, no, with the rain, no, with the subcatchment. If you click twice on the subcatchment, why is not coming? Ah, here, you get all these uh, details. There are a lot and to be honest, to understand all this um, uh, information, you need to be a hydrologist or at least uh, know something about hydraulic. But we can concentrate or limit our workshop on the, let's say, most easy um, part. Let's say we, the rain gauge, so this catchment, catchment one, relay on the rain gauge number one. We have the rain gauge one. The name is here. So the catchment relay on this catchment area. So that's one. The outlet, this water goes, let's say on junction four, because it might go. So because we want to dimension this pipe, so that's we relay this water on this junction. So we assume that all this water goes here. It's not real. But at least we know that the pipe that we are going to dimension is big enough. So junction four, outlet is junction four, junction four. Then the area, it is given in hectare. And we go back to our Excel file, catchment one area hectare 0 0.28. 0 0.28. Then the width, we have discussed the width uh, before. Width is catchment one, one uh, 52. 52. The average slope, 1.2, 1.2. How much percentage of this area is impermeable? As far as I know, there is no parking, there is no housing, there is no roads. So 0% of this area is perme impermeable. Uh, so, and uh, here, N imperv, it's a value of type of impermeability. So since we, since we don't have any uh, in, uh, impermeable area, this five figures is not important, but it means the rest is permeable, the rest, can absorb water and we have to give this value 
for that area that can absorb water, you click on your computer F1 and you get all the value. And that's a number depending on the type of surface. Uh, n perf, typical value. And we can choose the type of soil that we have. Let's say it's, as far as I understand, it's kind of short grass prattery, so 0 0.15. Okay, I put 0 0.15. And this one, again, if you don't know what is it, this store impervious, it doesn't matter because we don't have impervious area, but this store impervious, F1, we see what is it, this store impervious, typical value. And here you can take the value. Here, it's grass, I would say. So let's put 0. Point, uh, it shouldn't be, it is inch, so you have to convert in meters. In that case, let's convert very quick. Uh, link. Uh, it's 0 0.1, we would say, 0 0.1 inch. It would be in meters. In meters, 0 0.0025. 0 0.0025, 0 0.0025, okay. And the rest is not really important at this point. You have several um, simulation modalities, but I would skip the, the default uh, unless uh, you go through your uh, uh, book and, and, and read exactly what what they have, but it is very, very, let's say, heavy and complicated for a short workshop. So now for the catchment area, we have already insert the most important parameter. Now let's insert the important parameter for catchment three, no, catchment two first. Catchment two, uh, the rain gauge is the same, rain one. The outlet catchment two is junction three, jun junction two, sorry, junction two. The area in hectare of catchment two, the area in hectare is, oh no, it's 0 0.067, 0 0.067, 0 0.067, the width, the width would be catchment to 27, 27. The average slope would be 1.2, 1.2. Here we put zero. Here is important, we put, uh, we said 15, I think. I uh, think two, five, uh, zero, this doesn't matter. Two, five, two, five. And the rest, we keep it like that, fine. Now catchment three, catchment three, at 0 0.38. And our outlet is, uh, the rain gauge is the same, rain one, outlet, uh, it's jo uh, junction three, junction three. The area is 0 0.38, 0 0.38. The width, a very important parameter is 77. 77, the average slope is 0 0.9, 0 0.9. Impervious, we say zeros, here we say 0 0.5, doesn't matter. No, sorry, again, for one, five, one, and the rest, we keep it like that. Okay, and the last catchment, catchment for the rain gauge is the same, rain one, the outlet would be 
conjunction 6 junction 6 the area is 624 hectare 624 the width would be 1,700 the average slope 3.8 3.8 0 5 1 okay and the rest we keep it like and see i think you've um i think you've entered 38 rather than 3.8 for the slope oh thank you very much 3.8 thank you very much it will be a big difference because then their water will run much much quicker than yes i guess so yeah thank you for that Okay, now we have um, um, the, param the main parameters for the subcatchment uh, sub area. Now we can do um, the junction. So we go to hydraulics, node, junction, junction two, junction one. The elevation 329 junction two the uh, so here inflow there is no nothing coming directly like a source into the jun junction the rest this treatment is for the treatment but we don't consider it now invert elevation is the elevation of the pipe of the bottom of the pipe and it is 329 300 329 and the rest we don't consider for the time being that's it this is junction two, junction three, junction three would be 326.9, 326.9, 326 the rest we keep it like that, yes, junction three, junction four would be 328, oops, no, junction four, 328, 328, and now, sorry, junction four, did we have it, junction six, junction 325.7, 325.7, 325.7, and then the last one, uh, the last one is the outfall, is this one, and it is 225. 300 outfall, sorry, 300, no, it's here, 325.5, 325.5. Okay, we have it, tac, tac, now we miss the pipes. Pipes are the link, the conduits. Okay, start with pipe one. What we have to give, we have to cross check that is correct. It is going from junction four to junction three junction four to junction three, are ah, the shape. Uh, you have seen that our colleagues are using or want to use a pipe like that, this one. So it's half pipe of 40 centimeter drainage. Eh? So here you can choose the shape of the pipe that you want. You have this one, all those. In our cases, the most similar one is this one, parabolic, cold. And we know that the, the width must be maximum 40 centimeter, half pipe, the, the diameter, and the maximum height is 20 centimeter. You understand why probably, right? So I don't have to, so uh, 40 centimeter and here 20 centimeter. Assuming that they are not digging a, a wrench, uh, but we do like that. Okay, that's the pipe that we choose. It's called parabolic. Maximum depth, 0 0.5. The length, conduit one, conduit one, we don't have it. Oops, why I call it conduit one? Okay, I'll go back here. I did a mistake probably. Uh, the energy section, zoom to, this is, ah, that's why I call it drain five. Okay, in that case, train five. Five is 98, 98 meter. 
98. Now he the type the the rawness it's actually the friction we will uh, consider the friction loss in the pipe and this depends of the material we can put cross uh, we can uh, press f1 and we can choose the friction losses or the material of the pipes conduits uh, shape max depth length rawness here value for open channel And we will have most probably concrete. So between 0.011 and 0.02, let's put 0.01, okay, like it is. And the rest uh, are parameter for precision elevation. We don't consider it for the time being, for now. Okay, so we have the length and the rawness. That's all. And the and the, ta sh ta ta the shape of the pipe. Now we go conduit number two. Two, conduit number two is 51 meter. 51 meter, the same parameter, depth 51 meter, tack, good. Now we go to conduit number three. Conduit number three, we don't have it, what is it? In, it's 98 meter, 98 meter, the same is like that. And then the last one, conduit number four, is this drain eight, 183 meter, 183 meter. 180, 183 meter, the rest is fine. Tuck, 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 everything is fine. Okay, now we have done everything except the rain gauge. The rain gauge, um, here, you have to choose if you want to work with intensity of the total volume, cumulative, we work with intensity because of the calculation we did before. A timed interval, so every hour there will be a, an interval. There is no, 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 no no snow no in this area. And now the data source, you can put the time series or a file. We work in time series, but we have to define the time series. And for that, you go to time series and you create a new type series. We, we call it time. Okay. And then um, let's assume we want to consider 24 hour. Okay, so we start one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I'm sorry, eight, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, Okay, we can even consider more days if we want. Eh? And then we have to put the value, how much it rains in terms of uh, intensity. We have said that in six hour, we, uh, during six hour, we have five millimeter of, uh, of, uh, of rain. So it means, Let's say we start zero, it, it doesn't rain, it, it doesn't rain, it doesn't rain, and it start to rain five millimeter, five millimeter, five millimeter, five millimeter, five millimeter, and five millimeter. Okay, and then it stops to rain. Of course, you could make it different. You can start with two millimeter, and then up to three millimeter, up to six and seven, up to you, but I do it short. It's just to show you how it works. You can even display, so, it doesn't rain, suddenly it starts to rain very, very strong, and then it stops to rain for the rest of the day, it stops. Okay, now we have the time series called time. Okay, and if we go back to the rain gauge, time series, we have to give which series we are going to consider, time. Okay, now we have all the figures. And now we can start the simulation. 
and let's cross fingers that everything is correct. Cross, we run a simulation. Uh, and now let's see the option. General. Okay, rainfall is fine. Flow routing, this is fine. Dates, we start on the 8th, on the, on the 31. We stop on the 31, but we stop at 12 o'clock. No, 24, uh, 23 hours. Not, a, not six hour, 23 hour. And the rest is not important. That's good. Time step. Okay. Okay, the rest is fine. And we run the simulation. Tang. Wow. Run was successful. Good thing. Now we can consider our drainage. Let's see first how it behaves. Um, we go to map here. And we have to display colors on the elements of interest. We do not have interest on the subcatchment. We have interest on the nodes. We want to see if the nodes are going to be flooded or not. And in the links on the pipes, I want to see, let's say, the flow. OK, so when the nodes turns blue, it means it's flooded. If it is red is fine and here you have this the link the flow in liter per second here you can say the start the animator and please let's go closer maybe you can go closer here have a look on the color and here here time starts it doesn't rain for three hours at three o'clock it starts to rain and here the color start to change it's getting red not flooding yet uh, let's go down now it's not flooded interesting uh, and we have the speed this helps you a little bit to understand the behavior of the pipe but the best one would be this one we want to check the pipe we know that uh, we start here add note and we end here not. I find but so the con, uh, con, so pipe one, pipe three, and pipe four. Correct. Find but is fine. I save this current profile so I don't have main profile. I don't have to do it every time. Okay. And now I see how it behaves. This is our pipe, 20 centimeter high, that we have put here, all the same pipe, and we run the simulation. And we see how pipes re react. We start the, the simulation, and we see the time at three o'clock, it starts to rain. These pipes don't get filled at all, it's fine. But this pipe is overfilled. It's actually overboarded. So there is a problem with this pipe. And if we check where it is, we see those pipes here are fine. This one and this one with the, with the chosen profile is fine. But this one definitely is not good because it is full of water. It is overfilled, overflowed. And why? Because we take the water from the huge catchment, from this huge catchment. So that's what, what we have to do now. We know that this drainage might be, okay, might be fine up to here, but this one, even if it is not planned, we have to have a careful look at this point here because here is going to be flooded. So we can change, because first we, we save this one. I save it um, ex, uh, the workshop test okay and now the changement i change i save it with we i change it with another name test with increase the pipe size pipe big okay. but i just want to change this pipe because this is definitely too small so what i do i click on the pipe still parabolic now i can even change the pipe i would i i take such a pipe it's not a pipe it's open it's a channel actually it's a channel, 
the minimum I will take 50 centimeter high, 50 centimeter. The width I will take 50 centimeter width. And the slope, it's uh, uh, one. One, it means one meter left for one meter high, so 45 degrees. Can you please check again the bottom width, road 0 0.1? Ah, thank you very much. Uh, the width we say it one meter. Which we check it like that. Eh? Okay, height 50 centimeter, one meter, and then um, the side 45 degrees. It's a, actually a big channel. And now let's run the simulation again. Successful, good. Let's have a look on the behavior. Use safe profile. Ok, ok. And now you see the pipe looks different. This is like before 20 centimeter. But here we have 50 centimeter pipe. And let's see how it is during the simulation. First three hours, it doesn't rain. Now it starts to rain. Water goes up, goes up. Ah, it's even not enough. It's even not enough. It's going to be overflowed. Now after 24 hours, it slowly should go down. Okay, but the pipe is too small. Let's make it bigger. Uh, let's put it trapezoidal still, but one meter high. One meter high, one meter bottom and 45 degrees. We run the simulation, successful. And we check the pipe. Use safe profile, okay. Okay, this one, we run it, we go back, zero, and go. For the first three hours, it doesn't rain. It goes up, it goes up. It rains for six hours, a lot. Aha, uh -huh, that's enough. Our pipe, one meter by one meter, would be enough for this case. And slowly, even if it stopped to rain, since the watershed is so big and so far, there will be still water in the pipe, but no more in the small one. Even by the end of the day, there will still some water. Okay, this is it. Now, what we have learned out of that? We have learned that our site, uh, let's put it again, the border. We have learned that the drain number one is less important. We can put it, but it's less important because we have a very small catchment area. Drain, uh, drain this one and this one, they, are, they have to be there, but they can be small. You, you can still have a small drain here, but we have to take care about this area. Here, we might have a big problem. There might be a lot of water coming down here. There might be flooding here. That's why this piece of land needs to be carefully assessed. All the elevation need to be carefully taken. This simulation need to be done with more precise elements. And then eventually, you need to find uh, mitigation measures. One mitigation measure would be to make a drainage here. Even if it's outside of the area, maybe you are not allowed because it's another land and the owner doesn't allow you to, to put any drainage. So what you have to do, you will probably have to increase the elevation of this area here, more gravel, more gravel or make protection of this area here against flooding. And the funny thing and the good thing of this presentation is that all this um, um, analysis has been done from the Swiss Alps without being on the site. It means it can be done in Gaussian tech without any problem. 
as long as you have some data coming from the field. But definitely, if you want to be more precise, you need to be on the field and have a, a look at the situation carefully. You can cross-check better. We go back to Global Mapper and we put uh, imagery of the, situ of, the, of the area here, uh, imagery. If you see hey, there where we have our problematic drain, it is even more green, the picture, compared to the other area. And you, you, you can see kind of channel here. Let's see if we can display the pipes. Okay, if you consider even on the imagery, you can cross check that your simulation is somehow correct. And yes, you can see a little bit more green. And it means there is more water here. Probably this picture has been taken in the summer time, but uh, if you could have more um, imagery, you can see that in reality, this is a channel of water coming down from the mountains. If we go up, uh, we don't have the imagery so big. Let's do another one. Okay, now we don't see the mountains properly here. Okay, now there is mountains, but you cannot see on this picture. Okay, never mind. But with the picture, you can you can cross check your elevation, but you can see a little bit. Uh, what is it? Sorry. Voila. Ah, sorry for that. Okay, this is the pipe, uh, the the main water coming through, and this side of the of the camp is in danger unless we don't do any mitigation measure okay this was the presentation i hope it was not too heavy but definitely you have seen the power of the simulation and i think it is a must for every site every site to do that i leave i give back the word to david my colleague and uh, I would like uh, David up to you and question, of course. Fantastic, thanks, Andre. That was um, that, that that was fascinating, especially to be able to see. Um, uh, I mean, first of all, how it can be, how such powerful software can be used remotely. Uh, the the um, how drainage can be sized and the and the importance of that, just so we can. Um, avoid the flooding across the IDP sites. Um, Andre, that was fantastic and really, really appreciate that. Um, and I'll ho hand over the floor to um, any questions. Just give it a couple of minutes for any questions. Of course, uh, this uh, software has uh, a lot of, uh, much more power. You can do much, many more um, simulation. You can even uh, simulate water treatment plant. I have shown you just a small, small part of the software. It takes time to go through the software, but the um, manuals are there, even very academical manual. And if some of you has the interest, of course, they, uh, you, you can learn it. It's not impossible. I assume there is no question because it's uh, too much yeah. information in a short time. Yeah. Uh, okay, so look, if, if, there's, if there's no more questions, um, we'll uh, close the training session uh, now. Um, thank you very much to um, uh, Mr. Asim and Mr. Ahmad, uh, our, um, our interpreters for the evening. And um, uh, we look forward to seeing you on uh, Thursday. On, on yes on, on on Thursday afternoon so um, please uh, check the schedule we'll send it out again via the um, uh, Skype group um, and again uh, wish you a very good afternoon thank you very much bye thank you all